What's up, guys? So, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh. New, new facial hair? Oh, what? Hold up, what? Oh, ah, uh, what? So, anyways, guys. So, yeah, I changed up the facial hair. Uh, it's getting warmer out, so I decided to cut that god dang beard off. But today, I got a little special video for you. It's real short, real simple, but it's something that I feel like a lot of people would like to know because guess what, guys? Buying feeders isn't cheap. And I'm not talking about for my snakes. I'm talking about for my lizards. I'm talking doobie roaches. So, um, and they're not the cheapest thing in the world. So, I'm going to show you guys how to go ahead, set them up. It's not a full video of on a setup, you know, but hey, maybe one day I'll do a full video. I'm going to show you how I have mine set up. Um... But yeah, so go ahead, let's get rolling, and let's go look at some dubias. Alright guys, so setting up a dubia roach colony is super fucking easy. Alright, um, you only need a couple of things, a handful of things really, and you're good to go. So, with that being said, let's show you what you'll need. Alright guys, so what you'll need is something... Boom, just an egg crate. Just a simple old egg crate. All right, simple enough, right? You'll need quite a few of them, as you can see. Second thing you'll need is some sort of water crystals. Um, yeah, they make them for plants and stuff like that, but you can find them specifically made for your animals, which I think this one actually is. Yep, this one's worm and worms. This one's made specifically for animals. And then you'll need some kind of chow. You can make your own. I don't know how to do it, so I just buy it. Um, it's premium human grade ingredients, easy to feed, no fish colors or flavors. It's got their proteins, their fat, their fiber, their moisture. It's, and if you want to, you can pause the video right here and see what's actually in it, but I'm not gonna read that off. But yeah, you'll need some of that stuff. And then, if you've ever bought feeders from a store, you'll have cups like... Oh. You'll have cups like these. So, I just use these guys, and I cut a hole out of them. So that way they can, the dubious can crawl up in there and they can get their food, which I'm gonna need to add some more food in there. I just dumped it out. With the water crystals, you just soak them and you let them absorb as much water. It says exactly how much to do per, but yeah, so this is what they look like when they're full of water. Oh, uh, look, there's one of my males down there. Males have wings. So yeah, we can go through and we can actually see all my, dubious oh look there's a little baby there's a pretty much um it looks like that might be a male so it's almost an adult let's see if i can't find like all of them they're in here somewhere yeah they're usually oh look there's all the babies there's quite a few that looks like a molt down there either a molt or a dead one I think it's a molt. It's a molt. Got a couple more. Boom. Yeah, so I actually just had a locking pair the other day when I looked. So that's cool. That means I should be popping out some babies. But you want to stagger these things. Oh, look, there's one that just freshly molted. That's probably the molt I just found. We want to stagger these like this. So how this egg portion looking portion, you want to stagger them um, together. So that way you can create airflow and the poop can easily fall all the way to the bottom. You don't want that air getting stagnant in there. It's just not very good for them. Now this is gonna be a super short video guys because there's not much to say about them. Like all you really need to do is get them heat. After you set them up like this, you want some kind of airflow. Some people do their own sides. I just put one big hole in the top. Um, but eventually I will be changing it up and put them on the sides, but I'll get a hot glue gun and some uh, mesh wire, mesh netting to put it up there. So a lot of people use something like one of these guys, a thermostat on a heat pad, which is actually underneath of this tank. 
and they'll do that to give them heat because they like about 92 degrees in order to breed and uh relatively high humidity they're tropical so like 60 70 percent humidity but guys i have a foolproof method on how to heat them so if you have a dubia roach colony it's likely because you have an animal of some sort that eats them right it just makes sense so what i do is i take this I'll pick it up And I put it right there so that way the hot side of the cage is their hot side and boom basically free heat guys you can't beat it and then every once in a while you don't want to spray them too too much but every once in a while I'll come in over top and just give it a quick little spray and that just keeps the humidity up but yeah guys, that's basically all you need to do in order to make a Doobie Roach colony. Um, there's really not too much to explain about them. They have about 30, 30 to 40 babies per clutch if you got them good. Um, I think I'm averaging out about 35. So out of the two clutches I've had, I think I've had about 35 babies each. And um, yeah, so eventually, I still got a couple more months to go. I'm still going and buying them, sadly but um yeah so a couple more months to go and i should be fully ready and have a full dubia colony um and actually you know since this video is so short i'll give you a little something else ladies and gentlemen i also have a springtail colony uh these guys come in super handy with all of my freaking tropical and temperate animals you can see them all just kind of hopping around down there. And this is a super big colony. I'm actually ready to break this off. So I'm gonna be uh, giving some away to a couple friends of mine who need them. I'm also gonna be buying cups and stuff and selling it. So this is their food. They don't actually eat this. They eat the mold that grows on it. But yeah, so springtails are super easy. I actually ordered mine straight from Josh's Frogs. Thank you, Josh's Frogs. They came in excellent condition. Um, so if you order the kit, what they actually send you is they send you a dechlorinator. Um, I don't know where my that one is. I have another dechlorinator that I use. I don't use theirs because I'm not opening one when I already have one open. Uh, but they send you the springtail, spring to life, springtail food. And then they also send you this tub and this charcoal and these springtails. So you can use basically any um, charcoal as long as it doesn't have a starter, chemicals, anything like that. Some kind of like hardwood coal, anything like that. You can use um, you can use activated carbon, I believe. I don't quote me on that, but I believe you can. But yeah. So you can see I got quite a few of them. Um, I got tons and tons and tons of babies in here so like i said i'm gonna be splitting them off into larger groups here or smaller groups here soon so that way i can start another colony of them um i do want to get some arid ones because i got some arid animals i would like to test out the springtails on but yeah these guys you can pretty much just fill them up leave them i dated it this is the day i got them and set them up um so they're long you only have to give them a month to set up but yeah it's uh they're awesome to have because they eat mold they will eat semi-decaying matter so like your poops and stuff like that they're in your snake cages they'll start eating that really you want isopods to break all that down but these guys will also help and they help with mold and mildew and all that good stuff you don't want in your enclosure and you know they're honestly just great little cleanup crews and you don't need to do anything you don't need to make a make a bioactive form you take this you take a just like a little cup and you scoop up some of this you mix it into the substrate and boom they are good to go and they are there so eventually these guys once we get our licensing and all that and we have our site up these guys will actually be going up for sale um in smaller colonies so you don't have to build your own colony if you don't want to because honestly 
who needs this many springtails? I know I don't. Um, so most people just need a cup or two and you, you can easily make one cup go for two enclosures and they are parthenogenic, which is really cool. So you actually don't need, they're all females. You don't need any males. Um, they lay eggs on their own. Parthenogenic basically means that they're asexual. They can produce their own babies. Um, which is super awesome. So it's actually like we had um, in our tarantula enclosure, we actually had um, springtails in here from the, well actually I think it was Josh's Frog's uh, millipede substrate. And they actually migrated their way over to my ball python enclosures. Somehow, some way, couldn't tell you how. But one day I just had a bunch in my enclosure and then I because I do change out substrate a lot and I'm going bioactive pretty soon I did buy these guys because I want to set up all my tropicals in complete bioactives at least the ones that I can set up bioactive because you know like tarantula scorpion millipedes I can't put isopods in with them because when they mold the isopods will uh, hurt them quite bad so all right guys and that's about it so that's how you set up a springtail and a dubia roach colony now I know my fish hair is different in the video. That was recorded a couple of days ago. So um, yeah, that's why it's a little bit different. But I mean, overall, I wanna get this video out. I, you know, I got tired of spending money on feeders. So I decided why not set up my own? So maybe I'll give a couple of you an idea to start your own feeder colony so you don't have to go ahead and uh, spend your hard earned money all the time. Um, but with that being said, go ahead, please like, comment, subscribe. Hit that fucking bell if you want to keep up to date with everything we post. And um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll keep bringing it to you and we'll keep having a good time. Let us know if you want to see anything in the future. Other than that, hey, have a good one. Be safe.